Hi everyone, um, it's Ms. Cox here, and I'm here to present the case study for your packet today. Um, for those of you that don't know, I actually grew up in Florida. I lived in Orlando um, from the time I was eight until about five years ago. Um, so, you know, so it was my home. I loved it, and I miss it sometimes, but not that much. Um, and while a lot of people tend to think that Florida gets hit with a lot of hurricanes, that's not actually true. Um, they usually tend to just get the outer bands of the storm, like it doesn't actually pass over Florida, but like, um, as you can see in this picture, like these are all part of the storm, so usually we just get like this part that hits Florida, so it's just mostly a lot of like rain, but not wind. Um, however, in the summer of 2004, I finally experienced my first hurricane. I was um, about to start my senior year of high school, and that's when Hurricane Charlie hit in August of that year. So I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about my experience and what it was like, um, and afterwards what happened. So let's go ahead and get to it. Um, so one thing with hurricanes is they're actually really hard to predict where they're going to hit. Um, and so this is the predicted path of Charlie on August 10th, 2004. So we can see that it was heading up this way um, and looks like it was possibly not going to make landfall in Florida at all. It was going to go north. Um, you know, so we didn't really know what was going to happen. But like this cone shows like all the possible paths it could take. Um, and it's hard to predict just because there's so many things involved in forming a hurricane and also determining where the hurricane goes. It can be affected by different pressure systems, uh, by different wind systems, and so it makes it hard to predict where it's actually going to land. Um, so the final prediction was that it was going to make landfall in Florida around Tampa, which is like right around here. So it was going to like turn a little bit this way and then kind of path like pass up through this way. Um, so again, this was on August 10th and, um, Hurricane Charlie hit on August 13th, um, in Florida. So it was predicted to hit up here. It actually made landfall here and crossed directly across the state of Florida. Um, and Orlando is right around here somewhere. So the path of Hurricane Charlie actually turned and went directly over Orlando, which we were not expecting. Um, and so a lot of people in Florida, especially central Florida, like this region here where I grew up, weren't prepared for the storm because we weren't expecting it to hit three days before. We thought it was going to completely miss us and we were going to be fine and just get a lot of rain. So there was a lot of damage from this hurricane because of the last minute changes in its path and people didn't have time to prepare. Luckily, we had some idea that it might hit, there might be some strong winds, um, because we would have been close to the center of the storm, which is called the eye of the storm. So we had a chance to prepare by boarding up our windows, um, by getting food and water and everything that we would need to stay home just in case it did hit and be safe. Um, but again, it was so unpredictable that the morning it hit, that August 13th, I went to work. Um, I worked at a movie theater. They hadn't closed down. And I had to work that day at 10 a.m. So I got up, got in the car, drove to work, and started working. We sold tickets, we sold popcorn, we started movies. And um, about 20 minutes into the first movie, they were all like, we need to close. There's a hurricane coming in. It's heading straight for us. And so we had to, like, rush clean the place, um, make sure everything was put away, make sure all the people got refunds for their tickets. Um, and lock everything up and close everything down and like rush home before it hit um, that afternoon. So it was kind of really weird and we were driving home with like really dark skies. Um, not like windy or like super rainy yet, but like you could tell it was about to get there. Um, and so I just wanted to show, these aren't my videos. I don't have any videos unfortunately from my own house, but I wanted to show what it was like. Um, but you guys can see here the path of Hurricane Charlie, again, as it passes over central Florida. So again, Orlando's like right around here, and you can see the center of the storm presses, passes directly over it. 
um, and notice that it's spinning counterclockwise like you've learned about last week and this week. So um, you can see that in this image um, from the satellites. So I'm just going to show you a short portion of this video. Um, this is all taken from Orlando, Florida, so it's very similar to what I experienced. Um, it was basically just a lot of rain. You can see the trees moving around a lot. Um, this part in particular is very similar to what I experienced. Um, my house, we could open the door and watch safely because of the direction the wind was blowing. It wasn't blowing at our house, but horizontally past it. Um, so we had experience much like the next part of the video where we could open the door and just watch the rain and the wind blowing. Um, let me get to that part here. Um, and we didn't have a tree that was this big or anything, but we had a small tree in the yard and we could just basically watch the wind blow everything. And it was almost horizontal rain. And some people that had trees like this, um, as you'll see, basically had them knocked over. Um, completely uprooted like this is a pretty big tree it takes strong wind to be able to do that um, we also had a dog that we couldn't take out during the storm so that was really hard because he needed to go out quite a bit um, so we always had to wait for the eye of the storm um, so what a lot of people don't know about hurricanes like the eye is basically um, like a calm spark part of the storm. There's no wind, there's no rain, there's no clouds. It's just the part that all of it circles around. Um, and so the eye is like nice and calm and it's great. So we would basically wait for all of like the beginning part of the storm to pass. And then once the eye hit and we got through like the really strongest winds, um, it would just suddenly become clear and sunny and no rain, no wind whatsoever. So everybody in the neighborhood would like take their dogs out, go outside, see what's going on, um, check out damage so far, et cetera, et cetera. And then when we noticed that the sky started to get a little like darker, that the other side of the eye was coming. And again, that's where the strongest winds are. Everybody would like gather up stuff, rush inside, um, and then wait for the storm to be over. So really weird experience. Um, and in terms of damage, this is a lot of what Orlando looked like um, for the next couple of weeks. So there was a lot of trees knocked over, power lines knocked over, people who had um, screened in pools like this one. They had the screens all knocked down, didn't withstand the winds. Some places like this hotel had like roofs ripped off, structural damage, um, and some homes had stuff like that as well. We were very, very fortunate that our house only had minor damage. Um, we had some really big trees in uh, behind our backyard. And one of those trees, like a big branch broke off and ended up flying through our roof um, and causing some damage that way. But that was pretty much the extent of the damage to our home, which was great. Um, but our neighborhood looked a lot like this, but more mostly with trees, like less so power lines, but there were trees and branches and all of that everywhere, and it made it really hard to drive um, and to leave the neighborhood until it all got cleared up. And also with power lines being down pretty much across the city, we essentially didn't have power um, for about two weeks, including air conditioning. Um, and August in Florida is one of the hottest and most miserable times in Florida. So we didn't have air conditioning and I had to sleep downstairs on the floor of the living room because that was the coolest part of the house. Um, and when I say cool, I mean our house was about 80 plus degrees inside. So it was really hot outside, really hot inside. I ended up trying to work as much as possible because the movie theater had air conditioning. Um, and so I pretty much spent like 12 hours there every day, either working or just watching movies for free because I didn't want to be home stuck in the heat. Um, and Hurricane Charlie, when it hit, it was about a category four hurricane. As it passed over central Florida, it weakened some, but we still had winds of about 130 miles an hour in Orlando, um, which is the primary cause of all this damage. And it took a bit to recover from it. Um, there was about $17 billion worth of damage in all of Florida. About 10 people died. Um, and it was actually the second costliest hurricane at the time because of how much damage it caused. Um, once everything was kind of cleared up, we could start fixing things. People could start repairing their houses and homes and buildings. 
Um, we thought everything was great, and then Mother Nature decided we weren't done yet. And in September, Orlando got hit with two more hurricanes. Um, on the left, we have Hurricane Francis, so we can see it passed. It didn't pass directly over Orlando, because Orlando's right around here. Um, but it did, definitely the outer bands of wind and rain were strong enough to hit Orlando. So there was some more damage from this. Um, and so that was in early September, so less than a month after Charlie hit. And then we also got hit by France, uh, Hurricane Francis, or sorry, Hurricane Jean. This is Francis, this is Jean. Um, which we were all happy about because it started to actually move back out to the ocean, as you can see here, but then weather conditions pushed it back this way and it hit Florida um, here and passed up. And again, Orlando is like right around here, so not directly in the path, but we definitely got a lot of rain um, from this. So Hurricane Charlie, the damage came from the winds, but with these two hurricanes, Francis and Jean, they were very slow moving. Um, they, you know, you can see here, it took almost 12 hours just to move from here to here. Um, and over here again, like 12 hours to go from here to here. So they moved very slowly compared to Hurricane Charlie. And so that just basically meant that we were getting rain non-stop for that entire time. So any damage that came from these was water damage. Um, and considering they were so close to Hurricane Charlie, for people whose homes were really damaged, water damage wouldn't help the situation. Um, between the three hurricanes, there was a total of about $35 billion in the state of Florida alone. Um, so, you know, pretty expensive recovery. And Hurricane Jean, this one here, ended up being the deadliest hurricane of that season, killing um, over 3,000 people alone um, from this one hurricane. So, you know, not fun stuff. And these weren't even super strong hurricanes like Katrina or some of the other ones that have hit more recently. These were weaker. Um, the highest one was a Category 4. Um, but it was still able to just cause so much damage and problems with the area and it was a six week period of just constantly getting hit by storms and trying to recover before the next one hit and it took a while to get back to normal. And finally, um, if you remember from part two of your assignment today, Hurricane Florence, which hit North Carolina um, and you guys watched it go from Africa all the way over, again swirling counterclockwise as you can see here. Um, hurricane Florence was a really strong hurricane and it hit North Carolina, which is where my mom lives, right around here. Um, and so you can see that the storm, when its path hit, it basically went directly overhead. And luckily, my mom and my stepdad went home when it hit. They were on a vacation, so they didn't have to worry about evacuating or anything, but they didn't have time or the ability to prepare their house either. Um, and they live in a house that's really close to a big river, and they're neighborhood ended up flooding a lot. Um, their house is raised. It's not directly on the ground, but it's about, you know, three feet off the ground, which completely flooded. And so water was able to get in under their doors and through their vents. Um, and so they ended up with flooding in their house and they came home a few weeks later from their vacation um, they couldn't go back directly because of all the damage in the area, so they had to stay with family until that was cleared up and they could finally go back. Um, they ended up with water damage in their entire house. They had to remove the floors, most of the walls, all the cabinets on the floors because everything was soaked with water and started to grow mold and it started to spread through the house. Um, and so they had to remove everything and get it all redone. And it took almost a year before they were able to finally move back into their house um, because of this storm. So these hurricanes aren't anything to play around with. Um, and I just wanted to share my story with you. Hopefully you found it interesting and have a great day.